both had 193 total. Candle Pin Challenge here at Brunswick Lanes, brought to you by Usher's Furniture. Bruce, um, we've got a great lineup again for this weekend, but uh, this week, uh, the last week, uh, took the girls a little while to get used to the lights and cameras again, but by halfway through that first game, they were getting back in the groove again. Yeah, I, I spoke with all four of them after last week, and uh, were you nervous? Yes. <laughs> so we got four yeses out of that. But uh, yeah, this week, uh, we've got a uh, couple of new bowlers and a couple who were in last year's. Uh, leading off is going to be Vanessa Sonier, and uh, she was in the Skins game last year and ended up third. She's one of our junior bowlers. Louise Eamon is taking her first crack at this, as is Denise Woodrow. And Bernice Pittman was in last year, and she's back uh, qualified again this year. So we're looking for a good week again. And it's uh, it's exciting, you know. You see these new new people coming into the into the sport. They're in here trying out. So you know the interest is growing. Things are looking up. Um, we seem to have a, an unlimited supply of new bowlers out there trying to get into these tournaments. So this is uh, encouraging, and uh, hopefully it'll keep this this type of bowling uh, going for a long time to come. I think so. Uh, they're getting more interested all the time. Uh, we had 26 uh, people try for the 16 spots this year. Uh, I think that's going to uh, increase as the years go by, and uh, we'll have some good bowling. And not only with new, new bowlers, but new sponsors with ushers coming on board this year, and we're really pleased to have them. So if you are got all your munchies ready, settle back in your armchairs and get ready for another exciting week of bowling here at Brunswick Lanes. We'll be right back in just a moment. Usher's Furniture and Appliances, Main Street in downtown Yarmouth. Proud supporters of Candle Pin Challenge on East Lake Community Television. Off with a good ninth in break. And she uses the wood and comes off the wall and she set it off in fine style. Vanessa ended up uh, in our uh, skins game last year and uh, was third and uh, did real well. And Vanessa's still uh, of the age where she can bowl with the uh, youth bowling and, and does real well. There. And uh, she, for a young lady who is, hasn't been bowling too long, has done real well. And I think maybe when she has finished this lane, if the cameras will focus on a, a banner that's on the wall down over the alley system. So there's the second spare for Vanessa. Maybe the camera could go down on the back wall there now and show the folks the banner that was put up there. It shows the AYBC, the Atlantic Youth Bowling Congress, 98-99, the National Junior Girls Singles Champion, Vanessa Sonier. And that's the young lady that you just saw bowling there now. So, uh, belatedly, she should be congratulated, and uh, she's one fine little bowler. Certainly is, and uh, she's, uh, she's always excited about bowling. She's always bubbly and smiling. And <laughs> It's great to see. It just uh, shows the, the quality of bowlers we have coming up through the YBC here in Yarmouth. And uh, congratulations to all the people that uh, work with these kids and, uh, and make this possible. We're looking at Louise Eamon just now, and uh, Louise is, is a new bowler. Uh, comes from a bowling family, really, of some of the... Uh, Elderly people in town remember the three-star bowling lanes down in the south end of town. That was the Emans, and uh, she's married to Lloyd, who was part of that family. And this is her first crack at the uh, at the uh, bowling tournament that we put on here. And in previous years, we've had her son George bowling in the men's uh, tournament, and her daughter bowled in the, the ladies' tournament last year. Louise tells us that she's been bowling off and on for over 42 years. She has a current average of 90 in one league and 92 in another, a career high single of 131, and a high triple of 329. She qualified at 300 for this tournament. Well, that's a bit above her average. So, it uh, certainly is. She was competing very, very well. And here's another new bowler, Denise Pedro. And Denise has been bowling for 13 years and currently bowls in one league and has a 105.4 average 
with a career high single of 145 and a career high triple of 364. She qualified for this tournament with 308. Oh, tough break there. That was right on that shot. Go ahead, Cliff. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I was no, watching that shot. Right. Uh, uh, she was right I've been, there. I've been watching it. Uh, Nice again is a, quite an active and uh, aggressive bowler. She bowls a fairly hard ball. She bowls in several leagues, I think, and uh, averages very well. Throws it's that ball up there. There's <laughs> Her so, current average is 105. We're away to a good fast start here. I certainly are. Bernice Pittman, she bowled last year. She's been bowling for six years. She bowls spare in a league, and she also bowls currently in one league. She has a current average of 101 with a career high single of 146 and a career high triple of 353. She qualified for this tournament with 299. Let's say she had 300. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she picks up a good 10. Remember last year when she bowled, she was quite nervous and didn't think she was going to go very far. And if I'm not mistaken, she went down into the skin scheme, didn't she? No, she didn't make the so skin did she? Score. But she was in the semifinals. Oh, in the semifinals, OK. She's got a shot there. She stays over there to the left. Well. Okay, I think I'd have gone left on that one, and the wood that's still on the plate. Try to slide across. it right across. Yeah, I, I think that might have been a good shot over there. We had, or, uh, had some fast bowlers up here. Yeah. <laughs> They're up there and throwing. We're not even getting a chance to talk about these girls if they're up there and, and uh, down before you even get a chance. Vanessa started off with two spares. Picks Vanessa, up six Vanessa. on her second one for 33. Vanessa qualified for this tournament at 341. That's not a, a, a high score for Vanessa. Vanessa bowls real well. Uh, just trying to look on the board over there and see what she's got uh, this year. I don't know if she's been up to 360 yet. Yeah, I see her there. She has a 370, yeah. But uh, she bowls uh, real well, and she's got a looking in youth ball over there, too. And uh, she's on the board over there for some things, too. So Vanessa is a real good up and coming bowler. Now, there's a shot again, like we just had. Uh, I think you want to go on that slanted headwood out in the middle there, just about on the rid, and slide it across. And that's right where she's going to be. Oh. She didn't quite get over yeah. far enough. Her ball breaks back to the right a little bit, and uh, it broke a little more than she wanted at that time. So she's setting herself up for a good 10. And she picks nine for 61 on four. <clears throat> A big smile out there. She's a, a happy little bowler. She's always smiling. <laughs> now Louise started off with an eight and a ten. She has to reset on that one because the ball went in the gutter and tripped off a pin. <coughs> she has a real spin to her ball. Yeah. It just didn't seem to grab at all. She got it out too far on her right hand side. She's a very stand-up straight bowler. Oh, she's more than capable of coming up with the games that she needs to win here. She qualified at 300. She has bowled as high as 131, so you know she's capable of coming up with a big game. Said she came up here just to qualify with her daughter. And she ended up making it, and her daughter didn't, so it was quite a surprise to her. <laughs> well, that's good. You know, uh, you come and give it a try and uh, just see what happens. And, and then come and enjoy yourself. Have some fun. And that's what it's all about, is to have fun and enjoy the game. 
for those of you that have never ever tried the game, uh, come in and visit Albert and and uh, the people that work here at Brunswick Lanes. Uh, they'd be more than happy to help you with anything that you uh, might want in questions or in uh, learning the game. So uh, Brunswick Lanes is always open. Uh, they're always looking for people to come in and, and share in the fun of bowling. Uh, <coughs> Denise is bowling on a strike right now. And it picks up seven for 26. Couldn't push that wood back far enough, so she takes an eight for 34. Puts a lot of body into that. She has a lot of spin on the ball. You see, when she releases it, she's got a twist to it. A lot of twist to it. And, uh, so when the ball gets down there, if it's where you want it to be, it's going to do a lot of damage. Ooh. Didn't miss that by too much. There's an, uh, there's a... There's an instance where that curve uh, took the ball away from the pin. Uh, the bigger curve you throw, a little harder it is for, say, a right-hand uh, bowler to get to the right side. You have to adjust a little bit, maybe move a half step to the left. Or like but uh, if you're throwing that big hook, uh, you have to adjust to get onto the right-hand side. Bernice Pittman. Right on the head pin. As that ball loses its speed, it seems it, it will hook more, too. If you take a little bit of that speed off, it'll come around, come across much quicker. It's uh, an adjustment out there. Uh, the lanes are different. Uh, you throw a different speed, a little more hook, or something like that. You have to keep, uh, keep adjusting. And the more you bowl, the, the more you know what to do, how to do it, and, uh, and when to do it. Uh, it depends on what you got for shots down there and things like that. So uh, there's always something to think about when you go up there. And, and the more you bowl, the more natural it gets for you. Right on that front pin. You'll notice some of these some of these bowlers uh, they they don't change their position or their approach on the alley so much as the, the direction that they throw their ball. But then again, you have bowlers like Vanessa here that you'll watch her she'll move all over the, the approach to get into the position she wants to be. Whatever you're comfortable with. <clears throat> After four, Vanessa Sonia is 51, Louise Eamon 33, Denise Poudreau 43, and Bernice Pittman 37. A smile, but she's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching Vanessa as she came back that time. Uh, we've said a number of times you always wait for your dead wood to stop rolling and everything, and she actually stopped and waited. Instead, she wouldn't even go near the button until she was sure that dead wood had stopped. Well, it can mess you up. Uh, you start to bowl and the wood starts to move on you, so you could change your shot entirely. So you want to wait until that wood stops. Nice shot. Nice shot. See, she put that little in-shoot to it. She rolls the ball that goes from left to right, and you can almost, you could, well, you can actually see her wrist turn on that one, and it was right there where she wanted to be. I was asking her about her uh, junior championship, and uh, she said there was four girls. Uh, they bowled five, a string of five, and she had an average of 113, which meant she had 100, uh, 565 for five, and that's how she won her championship. Now Louise has got a shot here. She's got the 2 4 5 pin. Got to get in the pocket right there. Nice shot. Didn't look like it was going to hook enough, but it kept on going there for her. So Louise has her first spare. 
Picks up four. Picks up 47 on five. must remember that uh, you only have to beat two, two of your opponents to, to advance. So uh, if somebody like Vanessa jumps out in front, they forget her and go after the other two. That's right. And uh, the whole object of this is uh, total pinfall. So you want to make sure you pin. If there's one pin there or five pins there, you try to make sure that you, you leave as few on that plate as possible. And if your first game is down a bit, you always come back in the second game. <coughs> She's got both of those wobbling down there. Yeah. There she got one. Now it's got an easy shot. That, two, that makes it a lot easier. There's two her. pieces of wood there. A uh, nice uh, angle, one right on that rid. And she'll be right. Ooh. <laughs> oh. 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 She's a little worried herself by the looks uh, of her face. I think so. A little pick, body English here trying to steer that one. Picks up the spare. They had the whole length of the pin there. You, you really don't have to play them that close, and I don't think she really wanted to. Right back in that pocket again. Eight on the spare gives her 61 on five. Another big break. And a good break there on the two four pin. And there it is. All right. So she has three marks in this game, two in a row. And for anybody that's tuned in, we're in the week two of the Ladies Candle Pin Challenge here at Brunswick Lane. Brought to you by Usher's Furniture down on Main Street. Uh, if you ever have a chance, drop in, talk to Donnie or Larry, and tell them how much you've enjoyed the bowling and thank them for becoming sponsors of this tournament. It's always nice to have um, these people come forward and sponsor tournaments. Bernice has seven for 44 on five. Well, Bernice is the only one without a mark yet, so she's gonna get, get that first ball in there and get a break so she can get one. For anybody that has just tuned in, uh, we're starting to see a lot of action here. Through seeds, uh, girls are, they're not uh, slow bowlers by any stretch of the imagination. And, uh, and what I mean by slow is, or fast is the fact that they're right up there, they're grabbing the ball and letting it go. They're not hesitating. They're quick getting up there. They uh, certainly are. Which, uh, to me, I, I, I don't understand how, <laughs> I couldn't do it myself. I understand why people can stand up there so long looking at a shot or looking at 10 pins. Uh, uh, I like to get up there and, and throw the thing. Figure out your shots in between, but like I said before, whatever you're comfortable with is what you do. And uh, if it makes you slow in between balls or quick as some of these girls here are, then so be it. And I guess it, it, it that all stems from when you first start, uh, how you how yeah. you learn to do yeah. the game. Yeah. She was going after the ten. Takes an eight for eighty-two on seven. I'm, I was never a real quick bowler, but I wasn't as slow as some people that I've seen as in, in the game. Uh, I, I don't want people to get the idea that we're knocking these people that, that bowl slow. I'm not knocking it. It's like I said, whatever you're comfortable with and, and you do your thing out there. And the heck with what somebody else says. Exactly. You, you have to be comfortable. You have to be do it at your speed. It's like. And you don't change, you keep on doing it. That's right. Uh, you get consistent that way. And Vanessa has a six for 88 on eight. Sometimes you can bowl too quick. That's right. You know, or you don't take time to look your shot over, or uh, uh, when, you're, when you're really going good, you don't have to think anyway out there. You just, you do what's natural, and you do your thing. Pins to fall. Got the one three ten and the eight pin in behind there with some wood in behind. Could help. 
right there. Nice there shot. It is. There it nice is. Shot. She was happy with that one. Well, I hope daughter's here watching. <laughs> She'll understand why her mother made it. <laughs> I don't know if daughter is, but I see her mother is here, and uh, I know that she bowls quite a bit. And her dad used to, too, I believe. Yes, he did. Yeah? Yeah. We used to see him here quite a bit. Picks up three on that spare, so she's had a couple of spares. Hasn't made him count very big, but at least she's got a couple of spares. When we say she, come, she comes from a bowling family, it's on both sides. Yeah, really. You mentioned about the Eamons having a bowling alley down there on Main Street. Um, I remember that vaguely. Well, you should. Sure? <laughs> <laughs> you older people remember those things better than me. But <laughs> well, during the war, uh, they used to have five pins down there, too. And uh, the Air Force fellows out the East and West Camp, uh, especially West Camp, which were Canadians from, say, Upper Canada and stuff, they bowled five pins a lot. And Eamon's bowling alleys, or three-star bowling lanes, had five pins. There. And uh, they used to bowl a lot down there, the Air Force guys did. I say I vaguely remember it. I, I remember as a young boy going in and setting up some pins. It was on the last days of the, of the lanes, but I did set up some pins there. Denise picks up two on the spare, eight on the alley, gives her 81 on seven. So she and Vanessa are running neck and neck here, just one pin apart after seven. This is the first game in week two. Good shot at 10 here. Split those three. Even outside. So she takes a seven and has an 88, as does Vanessa. Bernice is 53 after six. Still looking for a first mark. Here's a good shot at one. Good break there. Matter of putting it in the pocket, like you say, is the most likely place to put it. Off a little bit to the left. And a nine for 62. in the head pin. There she is. Seven. So after eight in the first game, Vanessa Sawyer, 88. Louise Eamon, 75, Denise Woodrow, 88, and Bernice Pittman, 69. So there's not that much difference between them. There's still a mark or two, and uh, it could change it completely around. Back and on every that. one of them are capable of, of having that explosion. Isn't it? Back on that head pin, but she's left the 3, 6, 10, and the 4, 7, 8 over the other side there. So. Try to get into that pocket and shove everything to the left. She wanted to jump that pin over there, that three pin, but uh, now she'll go for the three down in the corner. Oh, look at here. <laughs> and a seven for 95. Well, after a fast start, she's kind of slowed down with an eight, six, seven, so she needs to come back now and just for uh, to change her frame of mind, make her feel better. trouble getting back on that head pin. There it is. Oh, missed it 
it again. And eight for 103. One mark would put Louise right up there with her. Challenge here at Brunswick Lane, brought to you by Ushers. And I'm kind of cutting Ushers' name a little short. It's Ushers Furniture and Appliances, <laughs> and located on Main Street. Yeah, they're located right across from the Salvation Army. That's right, and uh, anybody's trying to find them. Have a wide selection. I was in the store there the other day to see Donnie, and boy, they have a huge selection of uh, furniture and appliances in that in that building. Tried out one of their rockers and almost didn't you come did, out. Yeah. I bet you did. <laughs> And a seven, and Louise ends up with a 90. Perhaps we should have got Donnie to bring a couple of those nice big recliners up here for us, and we could have sit well, back. It would have been uh, all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> You might mention again to Cliff the extra prize that Donnie's put in here for the ladies. That's right. Uh, we have a 27-inch color TV that's up for uh, as a prize for any of the ladies that uh, can get four strikes in a row, which is a little added incentive and a very nice prize for somebody to try for. Some of our fans might think that's uh, almost an impossibility. Uh, We've only seen four in a row once, and that was Greg McGray in the men's, but it happens. Uh, you don't always have to be right on your shot, uh, right in the pocket to get a strike. You can steal strikes. So uh, four strikes in a row, is, as I say, is a possibility. It's there. Now Denise has got the three and the nine. Uh, if she got to the left-hand side of the front, the ball might come off of that deadwood. Exactly what it did, yep. Pretty hard to punch those two pins back. You can punch them when ten of them are there, but you try to punch the two of them when they're alone. It's quite a, quite a job. <laughs> it's tough. But uh, the wood certainly was a big help there because uh, the ball was on the left-hand side of the pin that was standing and came off of the pin real well. Back in that pocket again. There's a big, big nine. nine on it. But it gives Denise 116. And that gives her a good lead. Certainly does. It's nice uh, to have that going into the second game, knowing you've got a lead if things don't go just the way you want them to. In the second game, at least you've got something to stand up for. This is where you want that lead. Uh, then if uh, things do happen to go a little bit bad for you, you've got that cushion to help carry you through. Denise had three spares and a strike that game. But Bernice is still the only one without a mark. She picks up a good 10. A good ball. There Watch that extra pin. There it goes. Get some help. Uh, she just got the left, the right hand corner pin, the number 10 pin. And the kind of ball she bowls, she could be down in that corner without too much trouble. There it is. Right on it. Right on it. And the crowd appreciates that. Uh, the fact that she's going nine boxes without a mark, and uh, you really need one in the tenth, your last chance, and then you go out and pin a single. Kids are four. four. And it gives her a 93. So after game one here in week two, Denise Woodrow, 116, Vanessa Sonier, 103, Bernice Pittman, 93, and Louise Eman, 90. 
And it's only a 23 pin spread between first and last place, so it's still anybody's game. Ooh, that's not a very good break for a pretty good hit. <laughs> the Ness has been having some trouble here in the last few frames. To she hit the 3 5 6 and over on the left hand corner the 4 7. So she wanted that triangle hit to make things fly. Yeah, she'll probably go down there for the 2 in the corner, take a 4 9. Vanessa starts off with a 9 in the second game. Nice to see the crowds that we get here, Bruce. They're always appreciative of the good bowling. They always seem to cheer everybody on, even though they normally have somebody here that they're hoping for. That's usually the case. There's some family member here that they're thinking, but they give a, uh, a good hand to the other competitors. There it is. Oh, no. <laughs> Thought that was going to break enough to get it, but I left the head pin standing. There's an example of that pinning, taking those pins. That's where, it, on the last end, is where those are going to count. It's your nines and tens, and the spares and strikes will come. Louise Eamon. There's an example of that spin on that ball, starting it in the center of the lane and ending up over on the far side. That's, that's the hard part of rolling a big hook. Uh, if you get it dropped out in the middle, you only got half the lane to work with, and it's going to hook way left. So you have to get it in the right spot out there on the right-hand side so that it'll hook into the head and pour your shot. Uh, There's an example of starting down on that right side and then breaking across. And that's with that type of a ball, that's what you have to do. You have to keep it starting from that right-hand side in the case of a right-hand bowler, to make sure that you've got that whole alley to play with. Yeah, the bigger the hook, the harder it is to uh, control, really, and, and get it to go where you want it. Because I said earlier, uh, lanes change some, too, when they wax them or grease them or whatever they put on them, the dressing they put on them. Uh, makes your ball work different. And uh, sometimes, I know when we used to go away, some of the fellas that rolled big hooks had trouble adapting to the alleys. It might take them a day or two. Or they may never adapt to them. But it was because of the dressing and the type of ball that they rolled. So if you rolled a, a quick little hook or a cross alley ball, you were probably better off. And Louise starts off with a pair of nines. After the first game, Denise, who is up now, is our leader with 116 games. Followed by Vanessa with 103, Louise with 90, oh, no, I'm sorry, Bernice with 93, and Louise with the 90. Even though we said earlier that uh, a person with a good score, say like Denise is 116, she's got a fairly good lead, you don't want to relax out there. You want to keep throwing that thing and, and uh, keep your mind on what you're doing. If you get too relaxed out there and lose it. That's right. And uh, again, we keep saying that this is all a matter of the pins that you leave on the plate is what's going to come back to haunt you. And uh, you can't afford to leave them. Got very little space to get through that hit the single, so she may want to stay up there on the wood and push that sideways. And that's just what she yeah. did. And probably what she wanted to do on that second ball, but just missed it. <laughs> Pulled it to the just got to it the hooked, left. Hooked it too much. But she puts a lot of a lot of spin on it. It's Bernice Pittman, got her first mark in the tenth box of the first game with a big nine on it to bring her back up, put her in contention for this. Oh yeah, I I said <laughs> I looked took a closer look. She got four on that spare instead of a nine. I'm looking at the uh, teleprompter up there and that uh, looked like a nine from this angle. 
you'd like to have had nine. Yeah. <laughs> it would have closed that gap up a lot more, wouldn't it? Yeah. Finally get on the head pin and punch to the middle, so she's left three on the left and there's four pins on the right, so how to go for the... Well, okay, she... Oh, oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> oh, man, she, she hit that three pin right there on the nose and took all four of them, okay, and took two of the three on the other side. Any luck at all, she'd have had a spare out of that. <laughs> But that's just an example of never giving up and, and you know, that spares like that can be made. Yeah, uh, a little luck here, a little luck there. Uh, Handleton bowling is a game of luck. Skills, yes, but gotta have luck. I'm sure Vanessa was happy to see that one go down. <laughs> Makes her job a little easier on this one. It, but not going to drop it. Not quite hard enough. See, Vanessa has her championship sweater on tonight as well, so. Good for her. <laughs> she deserves to wear it. Certainly does. We're very proud of her to, for that accomplishment. When I was uh, talking with her before she started, I asked her a few questions on her single championship, and she looked at me and said, "Oh no, don't don't say anything about that." <laughs> <laughs> I just laughed. I said, "Well, we're going." <laughs> yeah, definitely are. Uh, we're very proud of her, and uh, she deserves the, all the recognition she can get. Yeah, nice. good thing. Nice pinning there. At the same time that uh, Vanessa won her singles championship, there was another little fella uh, who was at the same championships for his age group, and that was Jeff Keddy, and he missed his championship by one pin. Oh. And uh, he's one of the, the Keddy bowlers. And uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure about what he tried. He's uh, trying for the men's this year, isn't he? Uh, the tournament coming up? I think so. I don't know that he qualified, but, uh, but I think he did try. Or I would expect him to. Yep. I would expect that he did. Jason, his brother, is in. Yeah, I don't see Jeff's name there, but uh, I think he did try. Yeah. And that's great. This is uh, another just example a, of, the, of the quality that's coming out of the YBC uh, bowling here in Yarmouth. Uh, these kids are just fantastic bowlers. He's a, a left-hander. Oh. Well, we won't hold that against him. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. <laughs> <laughs> well, Louise Eamon has a kind of a tough break here, but the Deadwood could help her if she could get on that front pin of the two there, the three pin. She could... Boy. But I think back over the years of the left-handed bowlers that have come out of Yarmouth, and we've had some good ones. Uh, yes. Buzzy, Dave Bashera, and uh, Jimmy Creaser, they were left-handers and uh, were really good bowlers. Or at least I thought they were. <laughs> I don't know how they felt about it. I don't know about both of those bowled on your team at one time, uh, on the team with you, did they? They were both, yeah. Uh, and there were some, uh, I'm trying to think of some other left-handers that did bowl. Uh, John McDevitt bowled some. Uh, there weren't too many left-handed bowlers in town uh, in those days, really. I think George Watkins was the left-handed yes. bowler. Uh, yeah. Denise has a nine for 27. Another young fuller, uh, Larry Hatfield. Oh yeah, we shouldn't forget Larry, that's for sure. He was on our provincial championship. Team. That's right, and uh, at that time was just a very young man, and, uh, yeah. but was an excellent bowler. Yeah. Well, we're seeing very few marks in this game, Cliff. They started off uh, real strong in that first game and seemed to have mellowed out a little bit here, but uh, I don't think we 
have seen America in this, no. in this yeah. second game I yet. Haven't got one since Renice had one of the 10 blocks of the first game. What can we do to light a fire in her and get them going here? <laughs> Denise tends to drop that ball down, and I've heard it uh, several times. I think she hits the foul line with that ball. You can hear it click. The foul line is a piece of wood that goes across, separate from the alley. And uh, you can hear it. It has a plastic sound yeah. to it when it drops yeah. onto it, yeah. And if you're doing that, if your ball is hitting the foul line or hitting behind the foul line, it tends to take some of the stuff off the ball or misdirect it or redirect the ball a bit. Now she's got a shot there. Uh, <laughs> well, in the back probably rolling. the best shot is the center deadwood, uh, just up on this side of the red a little bit, maybe. And that's the wood that I was talking about, the one that's still there on the plate. It's not the best angle in the world. And she takes a nine. So after four in the second game, Vanessa Sonia 39, Louise Eamon 33, Denise Woodrow 33, and Bernice Pittman 32. So we're due for some runs here in the last half of this second game. Struggling with her control a little, <laughs> She's little all bit. over the alley. Yeah. Whoops. And she takes a four. I have a feeling she's going to come right back. That feeling. She's that kind of a bowler. We were saying, what can we do to get this started? I think she did it herself. She had a bad alley and said, enough of this. That's a <laughs> good sign. It's kind of a good competitor. Yeah. You know, don't Come get right upset back. with that four. Right. It's behind me. What can I do about it? Let's go. Let's go. Let's see what we can do. Now Louise has a little bunch of four there, the two, four, five, and the eight in behind. It's makeable. It's not the easiest spear in the world, but you got to get in the pocket of those front ones. There. Oh. Just, Just a little bit too thick. Too Great. solid. Yep. Yeah. You're on the object pin, all right. And a nine for 42. You know, uh, I guess over the years, I think one of the things that we've kind of neglected and some of the people that we've ne neglected to thank is the people that volunteer their time to keep the scores that are up. Um, they come here and they sit there and mark for the spectators. And uh, Yeah, it, it's helpful because uh, they're doing the telescore out there. It's a double check. We keep a, a score pad here where we're sitting but it's a double check and uh, gets the people out back a good chance. You can't remember all the alleys that the people have up there, the girls are having, so it gives the spectators a good chance. Uh, this telescore is a good thing. And so I, I just think that we, we should at, at this time say thank you to all those volunteers that come here and put their time in to, to keep those scores and uh, they do a fine job. Especially in the skin <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but we're trying to do scores and money. And usually what happens here is we have two volunteers, one that keeps track of the skins money and one that keeps track of the scores. And that's a, it's a very important job. And it, and it gives us a backup for our, our score keeping up here as well. Cut that one pin right out of there. And there's an example of the room that's in between those pins where they can go straight back and look, seem, seemingly go straight back and not touch anything.
Denise. So she's struggling a bit from her first game. Now Bernice. Okay, it's not the best break in the world, but the wood down in the corner can certainly help the contender to go if she get on that front. Just too thin. Five, six, a little triangle. And that can be a, a heartbreaker, that one. You can get on that front pin, you can take out one, you can take out two. And when things are going good, you get all three. <laughs> and there's an example of being on that hit pin where it would have probably taken out only the one because she hit it so dead on. After six, Vanessa, 53, and open on her strike right now. Louise Eamon, 52, Denise Woodrow, 48, and Denise Pippen, 49. Okay, she got a bit of a break there. She got a good shot at at least picking up three or four of these. Nice shot, that's a good nine. That puts her over par again. She's 62 on six. Tough wood out front there. She might get by it if she stays up there to the left. Well, she got it good. Right on the nose. Well, that's right. She wasn't that far off. She had that one bad eye, but she had all nines and tens and she had the, the four box. Then she came up with a big nine on that strike and put her back over par again. angle on her from the front you can see her wrist how she puts her in shoot uh, her wrist turning away well, she picks up a seven has 79 on eight the way she puts the twist on the ball it doesn't break that big so uh, she can adapt to alleys probably quicker than other people can. Louise, 52 on six, has a break here. One, two, four is the three in a row, and stuck in behind it is the eight pin. Camera angle right there. gives a good shot of those bumper pads down there too and how they uh, have increased the movement of pins down there. That in the backdrop also uh, in behind when that uh, sweep comes up uh, before the, the, the pin comes down with the pins you can see that the, <coughs> the back the black backdrop is in close it's right up to the, the back of the pin and uh, that helps pins come back in a hurry or the ball or whatever. Before. Whereas it used to be about four feet, I yeah. think, wasn't it? Well, you had to have room for safety for the pin to go. <laughs> <laughs> it was a dangerous job, I'll tell you. But things used to fly. Oh. More than once I've moved over a couple of alleys when I knew some of the guys were bowling, so. And Louise has 68 on eight. Woodrow. After her 116 first game, she's really struggled. Well, she's got a shot there now. She's got the one pin, then she's got three in the back row with a lot of wood laying around there. So get on that hit pin. See what happens. And it left the eight pin.
Turn that ball good. Well, I was going to say, when I turned that ball good, so it like Ken would allow to roll back and ruin his shot, but it didn't. That, that pin fell off the plate into the pit and tipped that nine pin just as it was over. Not hard enough to knock it over. And now she's got a bad wood. <laughs> Almost got to hit that on the edge of that pit. Yeah. She might have got it. If she'd have touched that wood on the left going by, it might have kicked it over on the wall and back out again. That was a hard shot. Certainly was. could hear it, but there was that sound of yeah. dropping that ball to that foul line. She's you got a good break that. there. She's got the 3-6 with Deadwood in the middle. She pounded it down uh, before it, she's not getting it out on the alley enough. And I think she bowls that way most of the time. I think that's just her way of bowling and uh, doesn't, doesn't get the ball out there far enough. And if she did, it might upset her uh, approach and uh, because she bowls pretty well. She's up in the 100, around 100 average, I think. So. Bernice has a current average of 101. Yeah. So she bowls pretty nice, I know. Two of this week, two. Vanessa Sonier has 79. Louise Eamon, 68. Denise Woodrow, 66. Denise Whitman, 66. And we've only seen one strike. Yeah, the wood rolls in there. Uh, don't think she really wants to. She could leave that eight pin if she played the wood. Uh, I would think you'd want to go right on that front pin. I think she was trying to stay away from that wood because. I could see it's maybe swinging in there and leaving that back in. has the only two marks so far this game. They're both strikes. She can't get four in a row, though. <laughs> <laughs> the best you can do is three. This end. That's going to put her over 100 again. Right on it. it. Got it. Good finish. It certainly is. Gives her 108 for a final score. 211. 211. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. Now, Louise Eamon, 68 Coming down to the final few alleys of week two here. The Ladies Candle Pin Challenge, sponsored by Usher's Furniture and Appliances, and uh, we're certainly pleased to have them with us this year. Louise has been getting a fair amount of action off that ball down there today. She hasn't been getting the first ball on the hit, but it's pretty tough if you're not getting the, the ball in the pocket or up on the front end and getting some breaks and leaving decent shots. It makes it that much tougher to get your Get your spares down there. So you've got to give yourself a chance. That first ball always seems to be off to the left. Yeah. This 
one. Should be a better one. Here, better in the pocket. <laughs> and there's an example of what happens when you get that in the right spot. And Louise waited till the 10th box to get her first mark. <laughs> Another one. Right in there. It looked good, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. She was in the pocket. A little thinner than the other one, but right in the pocket. That's the right place to go. Oh, had a good nine. And a 97 for a two-game total of 187. Denise. Yeah, she's getting a break there. The one, the three, and the ten. And there's Deadwood in back to help the ten pin go. Having trouble getting that ball to hook. Denise is 73 on nine. That strike that Louise just got put the pressure on uh, Denise right now. Yeah, she's she got, sure has. Well, she's got 189 already. No, she's okay. Sorry. Had that strike came a few frames back, <laughs> it could have. Would have put some pressure to Denise. Coming down, at one mark here, one mark there. But that's the way this game is played. That's right. A mark here and a mark there can make a big difference. So she takes seven for 80 and a 196. So for Bernice to get in, she's got to have, uh, what, 104, and she's 66. So she would probably have to have a double strike. It would uh, it sure puts a lot of pressure on her to, to be able to try and... Oh, wow. Well, why did that pin stay up? She can split those three just as nice as anything. Usually you do that, it's the back pin you leave. And that could have left the door open for her had that been a spare. Still needs a double strike. Ooh. Hard to believe you Boy. hit in that pocket and come <laughs> up with a break like that. It's pretty discouraging. Uh, the wood's rolling in there a little bit. Not a very good angle. Scores for week two. Vanessa Sonia, 103 and 108 for a total of 211. Louise Eamon, a 90 and a 97 for 187. Denise Boudreau, 116 and an 80 for 196. Bernice Pittman, a 93 and an 83 for 176. So the two uh, ladies who advance will be Vanessa Sonia with her 211 and Denise Boudreau with a 196. So we've had. Uh Two, game, two weeks here in a row where um, prior to the last bowler, the, the two contestants that were going to advance has been determined, but still the, the door was open there at the last for Bernice had she been able to pull off a couple strikes. So our, our bowling is still fairly close. Uh, there's nobody seeming to run away with it, uh, so to speak. But we'll, we've got a couple minutes here to finalize our scores and get our get some of our bonus money not uh, to uh, pass on to the winners and uh, we'll interview them in just a moment so if you'll bear with us uh, we'll be back in just a few moments to talk to Vanessa and to Denise Usher's Furniture and Appliances Main Street in downtown Yarm proud supporters of Candlepin Challenge on East Lake Community Television
And we've just wrapped up week two here of the Ladies' Candle Pin Challenge at Brunswick Lanes, brought to you by Ushers Furniture and Appliances. Uh, girls uh, started off like a house of fire, uh, slowed down a little bit. I don't know if you're looking for a second wind or what happened, but uh, Denise, uh, that first game was a real nice one for you. You ended up with 116, gave you a nice cushion, and uh, slowed down a little in the second, but came on enough to hold on. Just just enough. I was pretty lucky that I got in because I couldn't do anything the second game. <laughs> a lot of hard breaks. Yeah, right yeah. on. <laughs> how how did you find this as your first time bowling? A uh, little nervous? Oh, just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was very nervous. My knees are still shaking. Should you, you sure didn't show it in that first game, and uh, you you did a fine job. And uh, I want to congratulate you on behalf of Usher's Furniture and Appliances. I want to give you a little check there to for advancing into the next round and we wish you the best in the next round thank you very much thanks thank you Vanessa <laughs> first of first of all I want to congratulate you on your singles championship uh, that's a must have been quite a pleasure for you yeah it was it was a thrill huh? oh nerve-wracking at first but <laughs> just had to get back into it. I was down 40 pins, so I just got back into it. It was fun. Were you? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that certainly shows the caliber of bowler that you are, to be able to come back under those kind of circumstances and uh, and to win it. And where where did you bowl for this? I went to Halifax. And, yeah, Halifax. Was there a lot of bowlers in this uh, championship? Well, provincials, there's like six or seven. And then the two advance, like from like New Brunswick and then Nova Scotia. So there's four in total at nationals. So they came from all over the Maritimes to uh, try for this championship? Yes, they did. Well, congratulations. It's a pleasure to be able to congratulate you here at our local